Did it. Yes, sir. How you doing, Hans? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. We, we got it. We got it. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I was like, uh oh, let's see if we can get Jason in here. I have my computer behind me, so I was able to type there and, nice, and get you nice. get you in here, man. We'll, we'll wait a we'll wait a minute or two to see if we can get some more more Sounds people good. in here to Sounds get some good. I know that you know we're about to drop some good bombs in here from you. Hope so. Hope so. <laughs> learn learn from each other, you know? And always stronger man, together, always. really a Stronger together really seems to apply in the real estate realm right now, kind of sharing best practices and what we're each seeing out there, you know? Totally, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm totally, uh, I've been seeing more and more, you know, people go live and people sharing knowledge, you know, and just all kinds of celebrities. It's been, it's been great, what's, man. Like, uh, sorry. Sorry, what's the, what's the lesson you've learned in the last month or so, the biggest piece of advice or knowledge you've gained? I mean, one thing that definitely sticks out right now is going to be pretty much, I w I've been able to speak to celebrities or people that I've been following, people that I love, musicians and soccer players and just people that I follow that have, you know, millions of followers. And through this Instagram lives that we're doing, um, sometimes, you know, you're in a chat and there's not so much people in there. You can ask questions and they can read your question and actually answer. And they're like, oh, Hans, a great question. And like, and that is, that touches me, you know, like, artists that I've probably never come close to or soccer players that, you know, I'll never be able to have a conversation with or ask a question. They've been able to answer questions. And for me, I've been touching, man. It's been, it's, it's mind blowing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. What an incredible platform that you can do that. Like who, any stars that we would know of that you uh, communicated through online? Um, so I do, I do a lot of reggae. I love, I love reggae. So there's been a few reggae artists that, that I was able to talk to from Jamaica. <laughs> And uh, cool. a few soccer players from 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 Argentina, Dybala, from uh, he plays in Juventus, is really big. He, he was able to answer one of my questions, and that was uh, that was unbelievable, man. That guy is like millions and millions of followers, you know. He plays for Top. Juventus. He plays for Juventus, Dybala, and he started out in my city in Argentina, and I used to go watch him, and he answered a question of mine, and that was like that touched my heart, man. <laughs> man, that's incredible. My my biggest uh, my the. A follower that I have, he's a professional cyclist in the Tour de France. He's an Italian uh, guy on the, um, I'm forgetting, the Hansgrohe team, Bora Hansgrohe. And he follows me over in Italy. He's got about, you know, 300,000 followers. And he's following Jason Smith, Showcase Miami, down in Miami. What? Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this world that we're, we're going into, you know, there's, it's definitely, you know, a horrible situation is going on right now, but you know, if you can look at, be optimistic and look at the positive things that we're getting out of this, like things that we're talking about right now, um, yeah, you know, we could definitely get, you know, some positive things out of it. And you know, like, we're uniting. You know, people are able to collaborate and, and people are able to to reach out to people that, like another example, there's this guy called Brian Casella. He's a real estate agent in California. I follow, I've been following him for years already, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, I joined one of his live chats, and he was able to answer some a few of my questions. And again, for me, that was that was amazing. Yeah, that guy's a monster. He does, does door knocking. I mean, he's like a door knocking legend out there in, in the LA area. Definitely. That guy, you know, him, like I, videos on YouTube. Exactly that guy, you know. So, so for for him to be able to answer like question right there live, it was it was great, man. Yeah, great. yeah. Actually, I think he's Argentinian too. I have, I don't know, but I've seen him drink mate. This right here that I'm drinking. You ever seen this before? Okay. Yeah, I've seen it. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> mate is good stuff. Good stuff. Anyway, man. So let's start the show, Jason. Yeah. Yes, sir. I really appreciate you taking the time. Really appreciate you taking the time to to be here with us. You know, out of your uh, really busy schedule. I know you're a busy guy. Even through these times, I'm. You know, I'm sure that you're probably even busier now, huh? Thanks for having me. You know, that's the strangest thing. I'm sure I'm not the only one. There may be people out there that in this time when you would think you'd be slower than usual, I'm not saying it's more productive necessarily than ever, but it's certainly I'm as busy as I had been pre COVID. And uh, I think, you know, that's a choice that you have to follow your schedule and keep on task and keep on schedule, keep on getting up early, you know, cause, or not. It's really a decision that each of us has. And I just found that having gone through 08, 09, when we had that yeah. the last market downturn. And then again, after, you know, two, September 11th, 2001, what I find 
got me through those two events was just to keep the nose to the grindstone and keep on prospecting, looking for the motivated, motivated wow. buyers and motivated sellers. And believe it or not, there are sellers that are motivated and there are buyers that are motivated in any market. You, at the end of the day, you've got to have a roof over your head. You know, you get job right, transfers. I agree. Courses, I agree. You, get, you know, so we're here as agents to serve those people. You know, and I look at Shannon on our team. She's been showing some people who are very motivated. They've got to find their new place. So she's going there with the mask on. She's got the gloves. She's got the shoe coverings, as does, as do the clients. You know, she, that's why real estate right now is deemed essential, just like grocery, people Absolutely. in the grocery stores. Absolutely. Yes, fire, people fire, still, fire, people fire. still need to move, right? People still need a place to live. Absolutely. They're still, Absolutely. It's, it's definitely slowed down, but we're still seeing some closes, some transactions take place. Because like you said, just people that are getting job transfers or people that sold their house and need, a, they need you know, got a new house or whatever the scenario may be, but there's still transactions going on. So uh, Jason, tell us, man, how long have, have you been in real estate? I've uh, been 20 years, 20 years as a real estate agent, 2001, January 1st, 2001 was my first job. Yes, wow. How about you? 20 years. I've been going about three years and a half, about three years. I have a long way to go to get man, you're doing to you, lot. man. <laughs> no, but well, you're like doing 20 deals a month though. I mean, you're doing incredible volume for three years in the business. You, how did you ramp it up so quickly? I mean, I was doing a lot of rentals. Um, so I was working before Kelly Williams, I was working with a rental company and, you know, they had a lot of, they managed a lot of buildings in Miami beach area and the Miami area and, and just lead generating daily and just, just being out there, just, yeah, being out there. Like sometimes I'll just be walking my dog and I'll see people looking at apartments or like about to call a number that they see on a building. And I was like, Hey, are you guys looking for? For an apartment and then like i'll regenerate like that and then i'll give people you know so like every single time i saw the opportunity i was able to you know go at it and, and be able to help people and people were so appreciative of that because imagine having to like call a sign and like find out like you know right away i was right there i'm an agent i can pull out my phone go to the mls and like give you all the information hey that building has a one bedroom for this price and wow. things like that and people were like wow like just so i was able to do a lot of deals like that and um uh, yeah, now I transitioned, you know, over to Kelly Williams and getting more into sales now. Nice. So, um, so Jason, uh, so let me ask you, what were you doing before real estate 20 years ago? I'm curious. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I had 30, I've had about 30 jobs before real estate. <laughs> <laughs> so were they all kind of similar? What kind of jobs were they? Basically, I kind of failed forward. Let's say I failed forward till I found real estate for like 50 years. I was... Man, what was I? I was a good humor ice cream man traveling out the, around the country, giving out free ice cream, wearing the white uniform, the black bow tie on a promotion, pretty teen wheeler what? truck around, around, giving that free ice cream. 42 what, cities in 90 days. That was a lot of fun. Whoa, was that pr promotion for that ice cream company yeah. or what? Yeah. That's nuts. That was a promotion that... for good humor ice cream back in, yeah, back in the day. Uh, wow. Instructor, bank teller. Worked at a worked at a hotel in the front desk, uh, and then I discovered sales. Like about let's say six or seven, uh, yeah, yeah. When I was like 26, 27, I discovered sales. So I was selling office supplies, and then really enjoyed that 100% commission. And then mm. um, did well in that, and then went over to Zephyr Hills Water, big five gallon delivery. Correct. All right. I did uh, sold that for a while for about like over hours. the phone, like telemarketing door knocking and setting up at a home depot from 10 to 2 during their primary their prime hours on a Saturday. so so how do you think how do you think like that last job or those last two jobs with, with the sales how do you think you know they influenced you or they helped you uh, or they helping your real estate career today do you think you know there was any big time so basically what i found out what i learned from zephyr hills the biggest water company nestle mm -hmm. area, i learned from then is task Attention, which is a term they use. We need to be always out there talking to people and seeing who has tension, meaning that there's tension to make a move to get the bottled water because they're having to go out into the store all the time and get it, which is taken away from their productivity and it's costing them a lot okay. more than simply having a delivery service. So they've got task sure. tension. So if the sales pro or the marketing piece ends up arrives at just that moment when they got the task tension, they'll do business with you. 
So that was a, the best thing I ever learned from Zephyr Hills. And I learned that you got to wow. can only sell a product that you believe in. And I really believed in Zephyr Hills because I've been drinking it for five years before that. So of course, <laughs> I would believe in it because I use it myself. Wow. And I also learned working at another company that I didn't believe in the product. And I learned there that if you don't believe in the product, you can't sell it. So, so I learned two things, to believe in the product that you're selling. So I guess Definitely that's why you that. with Keller Williams. 100%, 100%, yes. I totally agree with that. And I totally believe in what Keller, like in this case, Keller Williams has to offer and, and everything they do for us and everything I've learned. I believe in the product and then, and that leads into me believing in myself even more, right? As a real estate professional. So absolutely, absolutely. Your market knowledge and your responsiveness that you just showed with those people that were looking for rentals. So it's that combination, but primarily, of course, at the end of the day, it's you and how responsive you are, your market knowledge, your willingness to help, etc. Yeah. So, uh, so Jason, so what's going on with the market right now? How do you see in the next six months? What I want to know. Man. What do you think? Great question. Great question. So I see, this is the way I see it. So the question is, who are the buyers right now? Depending on, so, okay, I'm looking at our listings. We've got a couple of listings, you know, mm -hmm. we've got, we got 14 listings right now. Our busiest listing is this waterfront rental on Miami Beach, Normandy Isle. It's a single family home, beautiful open bay view, sunsets, got the jet ski beautiful. parked out the back. Beautiful. That is the biggest <laughs> listing we have. And they're looking for rentals. And there are a lot mm -hmm. of most of these people are from the Northeast. So they're looking to come down to Miami on a short term lease, three to four months. The easiest listing we have out of 14 listings. Um, wow. So that tells you a lot about what the market at the moment, what's moving right now. Um, another, so that tells us something. I'm, I think a lot of buyers have been affected, you know, and their confidence has been affected to buy in the three to 500 range right now. So who's buying right now? I would imagine it's going to be people who have got businesses that are deemed essential, right? If you're a right. business owner, as you, if you're a doctor, if you're an attorney, a business owner in general, who's not completely online, has your Correct. business gone up or down in the last month? I believe it's gone down in many cases. So they're, are they really going to be making a purchase right now, an investment to purchase? My thinking is, is, is no. That's just my opinion. Uh, whereas hmm. people who've got some money stored away, um, that you know, they, they're, they're going to be able to buy. They see this as a buying opportunity, which of course it is because there's, I think, so there's buyers sitting on the sidelines right now. So they're they're kind of waiting for things to blow over. So if you're a seller, you're not accessing hmm. those buyers right now. Even though I, I hear. You know, online visits have doubled or tripled in the last month or so because we've all been staying home, looking at our phones and our computers. So, Correct. Yeah. Kind of I, right. What do you think? What do you think of the market? Man, I mean, you're the expert. You've been in the, in the market for you know over 20 years, so you've already been through a crash. So you know, you definitely have a lot more knowledge than I do. Um, you know, I, every single day I'm reading, I'm trying to understand, trying to see what the experts are saying. It's crazy how every single person that I read or like expert says something completely different, right? And some are saying, hey, like, nothing's going to happen. Like, it's, it might just dip down a little bit and go right. right back up. Some say it's going to dip down and then go even higher than what it was. Like, you know, the, market, the economy will be even better than what it was prior mm -hmm. to this. Some say that it's going to, you know, take a deep hit and it'll be slowly, it'll take a while to recuperate. So it'll be slowly. Me... I will say that, um, I mean, there's a lot of people losing their, their jobs, right? There's a lot of people losing their jobs. Uh, once all this slowly starts getting back to normal, I think it's going to take a while. I think it's going to be slow, a slow comeback. Um, let's say like a restaurant that, that is still kind of open, you know, they're doing delivery or they're doing uh, takeout or whatever. You know, maybe they have 20 people on staff. Let's say now they have five or six. So, you know, once they open back up, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to hire all 20. They might just hire, you know, a few more and like slowly start increasing. Same with hotels, same with all those, you know, service industries where you can't just hire everyone right away, right? Because not, there's not going to be a business. I think that, right? I've always worked in the food and beverage and hotel industry. So I think slowly every industry hopefully will get back to, back to normal. So I think um, it'll just be slowly coming, coming back. So... So as with the real estate market, 
Um, I think right now is probably the best time to sell if you're if you have a property because I think right now is probably going to be the highest your property is going to be worth. Mm -hmm. Now, so if you want to really? sell it now in the next few months, it's probably going to be the best because maybe who knows? But maybe I think that in six months from now, or a little bit, or a little bit longer, you know, it might go down a lot. If you know, yeah. we if we if a lot of people keep losing their jobs, the market might drop a lot, right? If people need to sell, they just might start lowering their prices, and you know, it might drop. So if that happens, sellers need to sell, you know, the next few months. That's going to be the best. If they don't want to sell the next few months, then they're going to have to wait a few more years for it to slowly come back up to what it is now or maybe, you know, increase. Um, and then as with buyers, man, interest rate. I, I'm actually going to do a video about this, but I've been learning a lot about interest rates and what it means. Like, not, not really what it means, but what difference it makes in the numbers. So with interest rates being so low right now, like 3% or some people are even getting lower, it's like, it's crazy the difference it makes a 3% interest to a four and a 5%, mm -hmm. right? So even if they buy right now and let's say prices drop and in the year from now they, they drop and the, and the buyer's like, oh man, I bought for 300 and now it's worth 250, right? So mm -hmm. what I want to do is see how much difference it'll be from buying at 300,000 with a 3% interest or if they would have waited and bought at 250 but with a 5% interest. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, I, have to, I want to do those numbers, but I think even if it's, even if you buy now and the price goes down a little bit, but you got such low interest rate that I still, you think you come out winning. Good point. That's a good point. I think another factor, I mean, if you're a buyer, this is an amazing time to be buying because you got less competition from buyers out there, right? Mm -hmm, you, you don't mm -hmm, have a bunch mm -hmm. of buyers going in the houses. So it's a great time to be looking and to be making offers if you're a buyer. I agree. Um, if you're a seller, it's a good time to be selling because there's two, there's, there, there's a pre COVID comp that your house will be judged upon when they appraise it. The sales in the there last six go. months before COVID, right? Okay. And if we're talking about the sales after now kind of coming down. So now these will start to be lower price sales, which now become the comparable sales when the bank appraiser comes and does an appraisal. So this was kind of brought to my attention a couple of days ago. And I'm like, because I got a lot of sellers that are saying, you know, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait till this blows over. And on the surface, I, that seems reasonable. There's less buyers working, so why not wait? The challenge Correct. is that those people who have lost their jobs, who are now going to start selling just to get the liquidity so that they can have that money to live on because they got, they got, the prices have gone up in the last four or five years, they're going to be in a situation where have a little bit of equity. sell. You'll have more people selling. And they'll just rent for the next couple of years, right? And live off what they, but the, the comps, the post COVID comps are going to affect any seller who says, I'm going to put my house on the market in two months. So that's mm, interesting. Piece that super I think sellers, interesting. Aren't, sellers aren't thinking about that right now. So, mm. I mean, I, you yes. know, who knows, what, who knows what's going to happen, but um, yeah, who, who knows if I, I think we can agree. I don't know. If, so the question is, are prices going to stay the same, go up, or go down? Can we agree that they're not going to go up? 100%. 100%. That's what I've been telling every single seller that I've been speaking to. I was like, look, take whatever decision you want, but for sure, they're not going to go up. So, like, if you, you know, there's all these sellers that go, like, oh, the high is, like, oh, when the market goes higher, or when the price go higher. So I've been calling those sellers. I'm like, this is it right now. Like, this is the highest it's going to be. Unless you wait five years or more. This is what this is the price, the highest, you know, the, of the value of your home. So I totally agree with that. Now the question is going to be not if it's going to go up or not, but how how low would it get? That's probably the tricky question. How mm -hmm. how you right? How much would the homes depreciate? And um, I guess that's going to depend on how much longer this this keeps going, right? Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah. Who knows how long it keeps going, but. The rentals, what I think, the rentals, I think are going to be pretty healthy because if that's true, if people do sell because they want to get some liquidity and they rent, so all of a sudden you got this big demand for rentals in the, in the coming year or so. So I think if you're a landlord, provided that your, your tenants are paying your mortgage, paying, paying the rent, mm -hmm. which I think is mm -hmm. a challenge right now, given that a lot of us have lost their jobs. So that's a bit of a risk if, if one is a landlord right now. But, um, you know, you're going to have increased demand for rent in the coming year or two, I would imagine, I would guess. And that's what we saw in 0809. I agree. I agree. Yeah. There's, I mean, I've been working with a few renters, and there's tons of people that are looking to rent right now. Um, you know, in my oh, opinion. Yeah. So you do, 
You see more renters now than you did two, three years ago? Tons, tons. I mean, I don't know if I see more renters right now than before, but since you don't have so much buyers and selling going on, they stand out, right? So I've, I've been getting tons of, you know, clients yeah. contacting. I've been getting a bunch of clients contact me or past clients or friends of friends or whatever. And uh, what I'm seeing is that people that were, let's say, they were living a little bit above their means. You know, they're paying a little too much for their apartment and their lease is about to end. They're like, hey, you know what? Let's keep it safe. Let me rent something a little bit cheaper, a little bit more economical. People who Absolutely. were, let's say, Absolutely. people who, yeah, and then you had the uh, people who, who now want to, you know, probably get a two bedroom and have a roommate. So I see that people are doing different things. Also, the economy, you know, so they're economic. Right, so people are paying more attention to, like, oh man, what can I save on? What could I, you know, adjust in my, in my expenses? For sure, um, for sure, for sure. So, for sure. so Jason, question, question. Um, so for new agents, for the new agents coming on the market today, starting right now and this craziness going on, there's tons of new agents, right? Always starting out. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, Keller mm -hmm. Williams is about to have a, a Keller with a bowl. It's going to be like a digital bowl online. Mm -hmm. And there's over a thousand mm -hmm. agents in that group. And I see that most of them were brand new agents. I've never done both. So yeah. imagine all these agents. I've been speaking to tons of them. And they're all. In your wisdom, what do you, what would you recommend or what would you do if you're a new agent coming in in the state's market? Just if you can survive, you know, in a market that's kind of doing a downturn and that's all you know, and you, you do well in that environment then you'll do fine in the rest of your career. So that's, a, that's hmm. the kind of the, the gift of becoming an agent right now is that this is wow. all you know. And this is, this is how, what being a realtor is. <laughs> they don't realize it might have been like two or three years ago, for instance, right? So I didn't even think of that. That's crazy. I like Claudia, that. Claudia, right? Claudia Restrepo, she's a mega agent. She's a operating principal of our team. She started in 08, I think, or maybe 07, something like that. Uh, Hudson Santana, another great agent. He started 10 years ago, so 2010 at the bottom of the market. So those agents, that's all they knew, and they kind of just ramped it up from there. Because in this type of market, there's less agents, unfortunately. There's less agents, so there's less competition than when you have a, a downward market like that, or a buyer's market. Let's say a buyer's market, right? Um, so when there's less competition, yeah. you know, if one can stay in the game, there, one, does, one can do well in the beginning and moving up. Wow. Career. That's a good one. That's a good one to, yeah. to think about. I, I appreciate that. I'm sure a lot of agent, new agents are going to definitely get a lot of value, value from that. So if they start now with this craziness, you know, mm -hmm. this is all they know. Then when it gets well again, when it gets good again, and the market is healthy again, it's going to be cake for them. They're going to, they're going to make tons of sales. Absolutely. So that's, that's amazing. And learning from you, you're like, a, you're the guy who does 20 rentals a month who can just process that much. So if they can just survive in the meantime on rentals with all the market of the moment, the rentals, that's a great Very way good to tip. get their feet wet and get used to doing a lot of deals and just Very good the tip. work and the processes and the flow. Very and good. Then, then they can do a sale either easy later. I on love too. that. I love that. That's very good tip. I'm going to start, I'm going to start, you know, sharing that info with more people, especially, you know, I have so much experience in rentals, man. I can, I can help so much people throughout the oh whole country, God, yeah. you know, with, with rentals, man. I'm going to be doing some YouTube videos about it actually, and sharing that. Um, all right, man, to, to close out, to close out the show, I have a few fun questions to ask you. Ready? All right. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds good, on. So Jason, yeah. what do you prefer? Would you prefer to be the best player on the worst team? or the worst player on the best team? Great question, wow. Worst player on the best team all day long. Why? All day long. You don't want to be the smartest person in the room. You do not want to be the, you don't want to be the best. You want to have people that you aspire to be like, you know, whether it's in athletics or in real estate or whatever career, you don't want to be the best because then there's nothing to, to make you better. Love it, man. Great answer, great answer. Um, what is the best place you've ever been to? The best what? The best place you've ever been to. Saint-Tropez, France. That's my favorite. 
I love it. What is this, Central Pay? Santro Pays in the south of France, like near Nice, the Côte d'Azur area. That is a beautiful, beautiful part man. Of the world. What is that like? Mountains or what? What is it over there? There's the ocean, the Mediterranean Sea. There's uh, beaches, there's mountains, great food, great wine, Oof. great place. Crowded, but I'm gonna Google food. it. Yeah, like May, May or September. Good place, good time to go there. And uh, I'm Florida, a, I'm a... Miami. What, what, what more do you ask? <laughs> Miami, Florida, all year round. You know. Seriously. Oh man, we're in paradise. That's why, <laughs> whew, that's why we live here because it's an amazing place. I mean, year round, it's a great place to be. Love this place. You got the weather. You got the outdoor activities. You got you got the beaches. You got more and more art, more and more restaurants. The cultural. It's got everything over here. This place is compared to when I moved here back in the mid '70s. It's just totally changed and evolved. Wow, so much of I imagine, man. Right? Wow, you've seen this place, girl. Yeah, for sure, for sure. 100%. The best and the worst purchase you've ever done in your life, anything in general. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, best purchase. I think our primary residence. Okay, where all I'm right. Sitting, right now, where I'm sitting at, the best purchase ever. Why? The, because we why? bought at a time like this when there was fear in the air, and then when there were few buyers out there. So that's Super when we get the best deal. My best deal. So we, it's kind of, it's, you know, pretty much doubled wow. since then, right? Beautiful. Uh, worst purchase was um, buying a property in Louisville, Kentucky. A beautiful property. <laughs> beautiful property. But out of state. Out of state. Out of state investment. Didn't have a strategy. Didn't have a strategy on what to do. What the exit strategy was with that investment, and had a, had partners. And we didn't have all the pay, the ducks in a row as to what we, so there's disagreement. So that was a bad purchase, lost money on that deal. So the, what I learned from that was have an operating or par partnership agreement. Either one. Uh, so you know what the exit strategy is if partners don't agree with each other on, you know, if one wow. person wants out or whatever. Have everything on writing. Have everything in writing. I love that. I'm, that's I'm that's a good one. I'm an attorney drawing that up, yeah. Having an attorney draw that, man, I love that. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, definitely uh, out of state investing is always something on my mind, you know. You know, prices here in South Florida could get a little bit pricey when you compare it to the Midwest or other areas. Mm -hmm. So I've always, you know, been learning about out of state investing, and that's that's a good one I'm going to take away, man. I always have everything in, in writing if you do something with, yeah. uh, with partners. I love yeah. that, man. So um, what's the what weirdest thing? Me? Oh, don't yeah. give me that one. I've been, I've been trying to think of that one, and I was like, the best purchase was a plane ticket to go to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 2014 for the World Cup. Oh, that's a good investment <laughs> right there. <laughs> that's a good investment. That must have been unbelievable. What, a, what an experience that must have been. I actually stayed. I was going to go just for the World Cup, and I actually stayed uh, two years, over two years. I lived there for over two years. I stayed. Did you really? I ended up staying, man. <laughs> you, lived there, you lived there before the World Cup or after the World Cup? After, like during <laughs> and after. <laughs> like throughout the whole. So it was from the World Cup to the Olympics. That whole time where Rio de Janeiro was just amazing. It was wonderful. And um, it was safe and it was a lot of fun. So that was definitely the best purchase, man. <laughs> worst purchase. Yeah, bad. that was not a like great purchase. You know, I was trying to think of the worst purchase and, you know, I. I I, I can't think. I can't think of something that I, that I just hated. I haven't, you know, had experience with buying property, so I can't tell you that. And I don't know, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a guy that before I buy something, I investigate. I investigate a lot. So, mm -hmm. like, I've always, like, kind of, like, uh, done my research before buying something. And I've always, I guess, always ended up being good. <laughs> cool. Cool. So, good. so, I can't There's think. There's a lot of says a lot about you as a realtor as, a, as an agent like if really? that's how you are methodical doing your your due diligence when you make a purchase that tells me that you're going to be good when you're guiding a buyer to make their purchase because it's just who you are right i appreciate that think, well, have you, have you considered, yeah have you considered this have you considered that you know whereas you're absolutely not so impulsive and just, hey buy sign here you know wow that's a good one i haven't even thought about that one i appreciate it man and um, so what's the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing you've seen in the showing? 
Mm. Uh, went into a Santeria, a Santeria property one time, a duplex not too far away from here. here oh in the, God! In the Miami area, that was that was funky. I wasn't I wasn't expecting that. Um, I've seen a pet monkey in one of the houses, like a little pet monkey. <laughs> a pet monkey. I love that. Was it just running? <laughs> was it running around the house, like while you're like trying to show the, the property, or was it no, like it locked was, up? It, it was. It was. It was. It was kind of like relaxed. Um, <laughs> that, that was. That was interesting. Then, That's um, so funny. We were doing a listing one time. Uh, uh, we just do a signing the paperwork on an agreement, and this guy's bird. He was kind of like monitoring, kind of looking down. At the, at the, it looked like as if he was looking at the writing, just to kind of no. check, double double check, double check the contract, make sure the owner wasn't getting involved. In anything. That's too yeah, funny. Yeah. No way. It's, it's like yeah. the, yeah, the yeah. It's like the parrot was like the attorney, and I was like, "Ah, right, you're good. You can sign." <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's like, "You're approved. It's approved. He's approved." Exactly. That's so. Sign. That's so funny, man. And uh, last question, man, before I let you go. Sure. If If, if you could have superpowers and you could choose, what would you choose? Would you choose to speak all languages or be able to speak to all animals? I think I'd go with the languages thing. All, what about all languages? I mean, as a real estate agent in Miami, that would be a pretty good skill to have. Man, <laughs> just to put that on your business card or on the website, all languages spoken. What about you? Man, I've thought about this one a few times. I think speak to all animals, man. Yeah, I think I'll, yeah. I'll just well, how, maybe. What would that do? How, how, how would that help? Maybe that won't help financially in my career, but I think I'll be like the happiest person like ever, like be able to speak to all kinds of animals That's and just awesome. like kind of understand their perspective of life. And maybe I'll be able to learn things that like, I don't know, maybe animals live totally different. Well, I mean, they, all, they do live differently, but maybe you could, from speaking to them, you could learn things and you'd be like, Oh man, like we're all like all human beings are doing all these things for for no reason. Like we gotta learn from like what they, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going deep, but uh, but, but but yeah, man, that'll be that'll be amazing. Like I love animals, but yeah, I love languages, man. I'm already uh, I speak you know Spanish, English, Portuguese. I'm learning Italian, and after I so by the end of this year, I wanna you know be able to speak fluent at least intermediate Italian, and after that Mandarin, wow. and then after that Mandarin, man. Chinese, wow. for sure. And then I don't have me that's, set. That's a gift to be able to speak that many languages. You speak a couple languages, right? A couple, yeah. A little bit of French, a little bit, a little bit passable German, a little bit of Spanish, not much. That's it. English. Awesome, man. Yeah. Anyway, Jason, man, I really appreciate having you on the show, man. You, you did amazing. Thanks, I really Tom. appreciate your, you sharing your knowledge and your wisdom, you know, to agents Thanks, and buyers Tom. and sellers and everyone. And it was great. I enjoyed it. Thanks for having me and uh, continue to succeed and do what you're doing. It's amazing. You're, you're definitely one of the newer agents of coming to this business who's really making a statement and doing well. And for experienced people like me, it's really inspiring to see someone who's doing what you're doing. So keep it up. It's great. I'm not, not talking to you now for half an hour. It's not surprising why you are so good. You're very personable and you're very comfortable you put people at ease so i think that's such a great skill for an agent of course, man, that means a lot good. that means a lot I appreciate like it. Diligence, right? i really I appreciate that jason wow yeah. man thanks so much i think it was good. great having you you take sure. care please stay safe stay safe and, stay and thanks so much again and, uh, hope you cool man safe. all right okay. bye bye bye